Bought myself a present. Took about a week and a half to arrive, but that's okay. Delayed gratification is kind of exciting. I don't mean that in a creepy way. I just mean it's fun to not always have the things that you want. At least not right away. And I hate to fetishize an object that's not something I typically engage in, but that is one beautiful camera. Just very elegantly designed, in my opinion. I can't think of a more beautiful camera. And it was, in fact, the camera that got away, so to speak. It's the one that I lusted after upon its release in 2004, but couldn't have. And so the spare battery I ordered arrived, but after I had already left on my photo adventure. But that's all right. The battery that came with was sufficient for the task. But you never know when buying old gear, the condition the battery's gonna be in. I'm out shooting for fun, but I'm also out shooting just to test the camera, make sure I didn't get the clunker. Yeah, you'll notice uh, I got four shots of these weeds, blades of grass. That was not intentional. You'll notice that it keeps locking focus over and over and over again. Sadly, a symptom of the same problem. Of course, first I check the obvious things. Maybe I think I'm in single shot drive mode, but I'm actually in continuous. No. Maybe it's uh, an autofocus setting. Maybe I think I'm uh, in single shot autofocus, but I'm not. I'm in tracking autofocus. Nope. Maybe there's sort of a countdown that occurs when, when you engage the, the shutter button halfway, and it's just expiring very quickly. No. I mean, that is indeed the case, that um, it will expire after six seconds, I learned, but there's no setting to change that as far as I could tell. Um, so I'm out there digging in the menu, taking a shot, getting frustrated, digging in the menu some more. I ended up clearing all custom settings. Didn't help. I then figured out how to switch it to back button focus because at least I could lock my focus and it made the camera shootable. But at this point, I sort of already know I'm going to be returning the camera and I'm enormously bummed out. Suddenly that week and a half wait is not so fun. Going through it a second time, that is, is, is not going to be so fun. But I carved out a little time to shoot this camera specifically today. I was very excited, so I just go ahead and do it anyway. And, um, I had to, uh, I had to just kind of try to get off the shutter button very quickly. Because it will just sort of machine gun off shots. And it's very disconcerting to me, because that's not how I'm used to shooting. I know some people actually do shoot that way, and in, in a lot of cases, for good reason. Um, there's no reason why I need, like, 18 of the same shot of this mountain. So, uh, I would just try to get off the shutter button as quickly as I could. But then it, it was like the problem miraculously fixed itself. And suddenly it wasn't behaving that way anymore. Which was thrilling to me. I was thinking, okay, great, maybe it just needed to be broken in. I don't know, maybe it had been lying around unused for a long time. Just needed needed someone to exercise the spring a little bit. So I switched it back to front button focus, um, which is, I prefer to shoot that way. Uh, and But then the problem just came right back. So just a little tease there. So I returned it, ordered another one, waited one week this time. That was nice to get it a little faster. So, super excited. Uh, I'm not less excited, I'm more excited. I really want this camera. Really want it to work. And I'm really hoping I've got a keeper here. A very simple menu system, and I did spend an inordinate amount of time in the menu the first time around. So let me just get out all my settings set back the way I, I like them. Um, first of all, increasing JPEG quality, because I have recently switched from shooting RAW to JPEG. I shoot RAW and JPEG, actually, just in case. Uh, I don't care for my images popping up after the fact. Don't want noise reduction from a 
camera from 2004. ISO expansion, as I understand it, the reason it's not expanded by default on these digital cameras is because doing so reduces dynamic range. That is at least my understanding. Could be wrong. I'm not an ISO scientist or anything. I actually am an ISO scientist. I'm just extremely modest about it. So this Canon 1D Mark II is an 8 megapixel camera. Its immediate predecessor, the 1D, was a 4 megapixel camera, and I owned that one. That was my first professional camera. It was released in 2001, but I bought it used in 2004. I used that camera for three years professionally before I upgraded to the 1DS. Same line of cameras, just a different model. Um, which is an 11 megapixel camera, but it was released in 2002, before this 1D Mark II, and I used that for another three years. So, something about this mountain shot, I gotta say, it's a little smudgy. Um, I was concerned. The battery that came with this camera was not, not as good as the previous. It died after one shot, no, two shots. But I had my spare. Hung on to it from the first time around. I was concerned about how I would respond to an 8 megapixel image with my jaded, spoiled modern eyes. But I think they're pretty good. They certainly don't jump out as something being wrong with them resolution-wise. They look fine next to a modern image. So although the 1DS that I owned around this time produced a much higher resolution image. I actually always preferred the look of the 1D images at four megapixels. Can't compare them now, but I always felt the 1D had more of a subtle beauty to it. But you know what looked better still was this Canon 1D Mark II that I couldn't have. I used it extensively though at two different studios. Um, mostly in studio, but some location work, but, you know, I wasn't able to take it home. I wasn't able to shoot personal stuff with it. Um, north side jobs. I just really wanted to own this camera. By the time it came around where I could actually afford it when it hit the used market at a reasonable price, I was more looking forward, not backward, and that was honestly probably the right choice. Imaging technology was certainly moving quickly at the time. More so than now, I would say. Uh, it feels like a mature technology now, and at that time it kind of wasn't yet. So I do kind of feel that I made the right choice. And it gives me this opportunity now, which is great fun. That photo is hazy as fuck, I don't know what the hell happened there. As is that one. It's a little concerning. Not sure what's going on. And that one's okay. The only thing that I changed was the shutter speed, though. It's, it's exactly the same f-stop. Yeah, concerning. If there's a problem with this camera, I certainly intend to find it. You know, not only does this camera look great, it feels great. Nothing to be learned from this image. Just not the sort of image that you're going to be able to track down a problem. This one, however, totes is. Versus the other camera, I find the details very smudgy. You know, at the time, I probably had no business shooting on 1D cameras. They were way out of my price range, so I always bought old, used ones. I had a fear of switching from that line. I thought anything would be a downgrade. That is until I used a 5D for the first time. What's in focus in this shot? Like, nothing. I mean, nothing's horribly out of focus. So I ended up just doing a bunch of tests. This is just one of the tests I did with these post-it notes. I was trying to see if maybe focus and recompose was the issue, and I was doing it increasing my f-stop each time. That is, closing it down to get a wider depth of field. Then I went out with the 1D Mark II and a 5D Mark II, it's the only other DSLR I own, to do some A-B comparisons. It had been about four years since I'd touched this camera and I was completely befuddled by the menu, but I got it figured out. So this is just an A-B comparison at the same shot on the two cameras. They don't look that much different, a little different, but I mean, I 
didn't see a problem. But I continue. Same shot roughly on the two cameras, and this time I did see a big difference. The 1D Mark II clearly shooting softer. And I had plenty of depth of field settings wise, and it's a premium L lens. But I use all these same lenses on film cameras, and they come out great. And autofocus shouldn't be better on an older film camera than it is on a digital camera. But I was also thinking maybe there's two things going on. Maybe there's an autofocus issue, and maybe there's a sensor degradation issue as well. But in this series of tests between the two cameras, the 1D Mark II performed worse in every situation. So it really does seem to be, whether it's sensor or autofocus, uh, that camera specifically, not just like me fucking up. This one was specifically to test near focus versus how it focuses as we get a little further away from the camera. And I did find that the problem I'm noticing does not manifest in particular for things near the camera. And it sort of grows worse as things go away from the camera. I think I was done with my AB comparisons at this point, but I just did a little more shooting just to have more data to try to figure this out. Boy, I really don't want to return this camera. It's in better shape than the first one. And again, I just, I want this camera. I love this camera. I'm having a blast with this camera. Just sucks that most of the time is spent isolating and or dealing with problems. The next day I had a little bit of time, I came to the very first location that I went with the first 1D Mark II. And although I didn't have the photos with me to look at, to the best of my ability I wanted to try to match a couple of shots to compare them. Um, I have no way to do an A-B comparison otherwise because I don't have that camera anymore. But the lighting conditions are different, it's a very different time of day, so I don't expect a perfect match. but. Maybe there'd be some information to be gleaned. So zooming into the one I just took, zooming into the one with the other camera. Granted there's snow and that kind of increases contrast, but I think it's clear the new camera is just smudgy and losing detail. I hate that this is how things worked out. I really imagine this as being a celebration of an overlooked classic. My 5D that everyone seems to love so much. This is my version of that. I took two of these because the lighting conditions changed and I just didn't know which would match the original better. Yeah, and it's hazy, there's a loss of detail, loss of contrast, kind of a sickly bloom effect going on. At this point, I'm not even shooting for art, if that wasn't apparent. I'm just trying to get test shots. And that looks normal. I would not know that there's a problem from this. It basically looks like how I remember rock shots looking from the other group of photos. But then I swing around and take this. Completely flat shot, but nothing's in focus. I mean, it's almost in focus, but it's not in focus. And that's a problem. That should be an easy one to nail focus on. A completely flat shot like that. But then this looks normal. But, you know, I figure there's like a margin of error where if it back focused or front focused a little, on a shot like that, you probably wouldn't notice. But okay, spoiler alert, I returned the thing. Every subsequent shot just further demonstrates the need to do so. And there are other things I'd like to talk about. Like, does this camera hold up? Stuff like that's hard to answer. This may come as a shock to you, but modern cameras are better in every way. It's nice to think that there's some magic to be found in revisiting the past. There is some magic, but it's all in the experience. And that certainly has a bearing on the sorts of shots I'm likely to take with it. But um, having this camera in my hand made me feel a certain way. And I liked that. And I'm giving up a lot of resolution. You know, that raises the question of how much resolution is enough resolution? I don't have that answer. It depends, I would say. It depends on you, the user of the camera mostly, whether or not you're satisfied. Full frame? Is that a problem that this is not a full frame camera? It's not a problem in particular for me. Uh, I do like a full frame camera, but that's just an arbitrary size. It's not like full frame is 
of some cosmic importance woven into the fabric of the universe, like the speed of light or the boiling point of water or something. It's just arbitrary. Does it ever strike you as interesting that the backs of film cameras just had blank spaces on them, almost like they were waiting for the invention of digital photography and screens? It's just weird how that worked out. It almost seems like there was some foresight involved, which obviously there was not. Am I going to try a third time? Am I going to buy another 1D Mark II? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. I wish my luck had been better on the first two attempts. I cannot stress enough how much I wanted this to work out. You know, the first one I returned, I got my money back for it. But it's back on sale, I noticed. I contacted the company to see if they had fixed the problem. I mean, if they had, I might just buy it again. But they said they couldn't reproduce the problem, which, if that's the case, I doubt they spent more than one second testing it out. But at least that would put this in the realm of carelessness rather than malice. I'd hate to think that they'd be willing to just sell broken gear until eventually someone gets stuck with it. The second camera was missing the eyepiece, which was not mentioned in the listing. It turned out to be the same eyepiece as a, the Canon 1N, which I have. It's a film camera, so I just borrowed it from that temporarily, and I ordered another eyepiece, which is on its way. So I'm going to be stuck with that eyepiece, but whatever. So I'm not shooting the 5D Mark II today, because if there's a lesson to be learned from all this, not that I think there's a lesson attached to every experience, but I thought maybe the lesson for me could be appreciate what you already have if I want to go out and shoot an old DSLR. Well, I've got one, and it's far more capable than the, the Canon 1D Mark II, just by virtue of the fact that it's newer. But I felt nothing shooting this camera. Nothing. It felt like I was holding a screwdriver. I don't know if that's something, like, intrinsic with the camera, or if it's just the fact that I shot on this camera for so many years. Nothing for me, only for clients. There's no fun attached to this camera. Like, maybe having this camera in my hands brought all those memories back. Whereas those early 1D era cameras, the association I have is discovery. Not knowing what the fuck you're doing and constantly experimenting. And it brought me right back into that mindset. Though I didn't really have the opportunity to experiment, because I was too busy testing broken shit. It's so frustrating. 